Woo! Haven Ministry. Woo! This is our Shabbat service today. And we are going to start off in the book of Bereshith or Genesis. Bereshith means beginnings. And we're going to really advise you if you can to pay real close attention because I started getting I started reading a book on the first part of this message and the father showed me something that totally blew my mind and I was like I couldn't believe it it was so unbelievable and I'm going to share it with you but it's going to take us a while to get there because I'm going to show you the same way that he took me from one scripture to another and then when I was back there he showed me the rest of it so <clears throat> in Bereshith chapter 6 or Genesis 6 In verse 3, Yahuwah makes a statement. Okay? Now we've come to find out when it seems like the word contradicts itself, it doesn't. We just don't understand what he's talking about. Okay? So in chapter 6, verse 3, <coughs> it says, and Yahuwah said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever. Wait. My spirit shall not strive with man forever in his going astray. He is flesh, and his days shall be numbered 120 years. Okay? Now let's go to Bereshith chapter 11. Genesis 11. Verse number 12. Okay. Now we're going to look at this one. Chapter 11, verse 12. It says, And Arpachshad lived 35 years and brought forth Sheila, or Selah, Verse 13. And after he brought forth Shela, our Pakshad lived 403 years and brought forth sons and daughters. So we have a problem here because just three chapters before, he says he's only going to give man 120 years. So now we're reading three chapters later and he said this dude lived 400 years. So we have a problem, okay? Now the father is not wrong we just don't understand what he's talking about okay so when I looked up the word years okay in the concordance they didn't really know the definition they said we really can't define what he means by years in a sense if he's talking about an agricultural year he's talking about what kind of year but what I read this week which got me started on part of this message was that it wasn't 120 years he was talking about because we can already see that somebody lived past 120 years. It was 120 cycles. Okay? So then we have to figure out, okay, what is a cycle? And this man, he compared it to Leviticus 25. So let's go there. Waikra 25. And this all relates back to the Sabbath, okay? It started in the beginning. It says six days you work and on the seventh day you rest, okay? So in Hebrew, the, the numbers could be a multiplier. Seven could be 70, could be 700, could be 7,000, could be 70,000, could be 700,000, could be 7 million, could be 70 million, could be 700 million, could be 7 billion. 70 billion, 700 billion, okay? So sometimes it's a multiplier, so we, we have to look at it in that way. But let's start off in 25, and we'll, we'll break it down and be real simple. Uh, Waikra or Leviticus 25, verse 1. 
It says, And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe on Mount Sinai, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I give you, then the land shall ha observe a Sabbath to Yahuwah. So not only us, but it says the land. Verse 3, Six years you sow in your field, and six years you prune your vineyard and gather in its fruit. But the seventh year, the land is to have a Sabbath rest, a Sabbath to Yahuwah. You do not sow your field, nor do you prune your vineyards. Okay, So it's saying, just like six days we work, seventh day we rest. So now this is talking about years. It's saying, okay, the land, you can work the land for six years, in the seventh year it rests. Okay, So we see the same thing from days to years. Okay, let's keep reading. Uh, verse 6, And the Sabbath of the land shall be to you for food. For you and your servant and your female servant and your hired servant and for the stranger who sojourns with you. And for your livestock and the beasts that are in your land and all the crops. All its crops are for food. Verse 8. And you shall count seven Sabbath years for yourself. Seven times seven years. And the time of the seven Sabbaths and years shall be unto you forty-nine years. So it says, now I want you to count seven times seven. Okay, and I'm going to explain it. I'll make it easy right now if you got lost already. Uh, verse 9. You shall then sound a shofar on the tenth day of the seventh new moon, which is Yom Hikaparim, or the Day of Atonement. Cause the shofar to sound through all your land. And you shall set the fiftieth year apart and proclaim release through all the land to all its inhabitants. It is a yobel, or what we used to call jubilee, for you. Each of you shall return to his possession. Each of you shall return to his clan. Okay. Uh, so, now let's go through and explain that. So he's saying 49 or 7 times 7, 7 Sabbath years times 7 Sabbath years is 49. And then in the 50th year is the year of Yobel, or it's a year of freedom. Okay? So now, let's take that. Let's say a cycle is 50 years. So if we take the 120 years that he promised man in chapter 6, and times it times 50, then we have 6,000 years. Okay? So he says, I'm only going to deal with mankind for 6,000 years. Okay? So then what happens after that? Let's turn real quick to... Uh, we're going to go back here because there's still so much more here. But I want to show you the first part. Uh, Revelation or Hazan. Chapter 20. Verse 4. And keep your place there because we're going to go back. We're not done with that verse. So let's say if a cycle is 50 years, okay, and he says, he, I've given man 120 years, or I've given him 120 cycles, that would be a, a 50 times 120 would give you 6,000. Okay, now we look on chapter 20 of Revelation, verse 4. And it says, And I saw thrones, and they sat on them. And judgment was given to them, and the lives of those who had been beheaded for the witness, they bore to Yahushua, and because of the word of Elohim, who did not worship the beast, nor his image, nor did receive the mark upon their foreheads, or upon their hands, and they lived and reigned with Messiah for a thousand years. That's a picture of the Sabbath. Okay? Now what does it say? Let's take it from days. Okay, for six days you work, Seventh day you rest. Okay? So he says, for 6,000 years, I'm going to deal with man, but in the 7,000th seventh, the 7, year, right? It's done. Right? So this is talking about 
the Sabbath rest, which is going to be a thousand years, which it says we're going to rule and reign for one thousand years. Okay? And the devil's going to be locked up. Let's go back, because we're not done with that verse either, but let's go back to Leviticus 25, because it says a lot there. Now see, this is why it's so important, see, and this is why the enemy has came in and taken things from us. This is why he came in and took the Sabbath from us. This is why he came in and took the feast away from us and replaced us and gave us Christmas and Easter because now we don't know the time. We don't understand what's going on. We don't understand where we are. We don't understand how things are working. That's why we're so confused. But what happens? Uh, are we going there? Is it coming here? Are, is this? Uh, when? How? What time? Because we don't know the seasons. We don't know the feasts. Okay? We don't understand the Sabbath. Okay? So pretty much it's saying we're going to have 6,000 years and then at the end of 6,000 years he's done. He's going to bring judgment and those that are in him are going to rule and reign and they're going to be, have rest, right? Which is rest? Would you rest from the stress of, of all the, uh, the enemy bugging you and dealing with all you so we get our 1,000 years of rest, okay? Now let's go back to uh, Leviticus 25. Now this is talking about the Day of Atonement, Okay? And the Day of Atonement is a feast, okay? And it says, you shall blow this so far on the Day of Atonement. And what it is, is it sets apart the 50th year, which is the year of Yobel, okay? Now, what is this atonement? Atonement was a day of fasting, okay? Where you would come and you would fast and you would pray and you would ask the Father, where am I with you, Okay? I don't want. I know people are telling me I do good things and I help a lot of people and and and, and I donate money or you know what I mean I help people the best that I can, but it's the time when you say, okay, where am I with you? Where's how's my life? How's my attitude? How's my character? You know, am I you know where am I at with you? And so it's a day of repentance, okay? And it says all the people are to come, okay. Now this is a picture, okay. He's telling us, if we're honoring this every year, then we're going to be ready. It's like a checkup. When you go to the doctor, the doctor, you say, okay, I want to see you uh, once a year, right? If, if you're normal, healthy, probably once a year or whatever. Or your car. Nobody drives your car forever without getting a tune-up, okay? But spiritually, we try to do that. We try to drive forever without getting a tune-up, without getting a checkup, without going and say, how is my life, Okay? And that's why he said has that day, that day of atonement, okay? But what is it atoning? He's preparing us for his return. If we go before him during that day and we come and we set that aside and we do what we need to do and we say, okay, where am I at with you? And he tells you, okay, you got a problem with your attitude. I need you to change that. You say, okay, Father, I'm going to work on that. Give me some uh, pointers. How do I start? Uh, can you give me an example? You know what I mean? Because I'll ask him, what do you mean by that? Okay, I, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with you, but okay. Can you give me an example? Can you tell me, uh, uh, show me how I'm doing it? Because I don't realize I'm doing it. right? And then he'll give me an example. show me, okay, well, it's this. You're doing this. Okay. <clears throat> now, there was another feast after that, which was Sukkot. Okay, and that was the last feast. And that was where it says, Yahuwah that we're to build booths outside and that Yahuwah comes and dwells with us. Okay? Now, it's all prophetic. It goes together. Here's how it works. Okay? The atonement is when we're asking for forgiveness, making sure we're right with Him so that we don't miss the time with Him. Okay? So after 6,000 years, every year He has us come up to make sure we're in line with Him, to make sure our life's right, to make sure we're not falling away, to make sure we're not going sideways, to make sure we're doing the things we need to do. Okay? You see it happen a lot of time with people that lead ministries. Is that, well, they're doing so good and they have a big congregation, but why are they all of a sudden now in, in homosexuality? Or now, why is there a scandal with them sleeping with somebody else's wife? What happened? Well, they weren't, they weren't keeping themselves checked up. Okay? You could quit going to the doctor. You know what I mean? You don't know what's going on with you. So, so there's repentance here, and then the fullness comes, which is Sukkot, which is the Father coming and dwelling with us. Okay, now that speaks of the picture. Think of it. 6,000 years, then after 6,000 years, we're going to have 1,000 years of rest, which means what? The Father is going to come 
and dwell with us. Okay? Let's turn to... Uh, Oh, no, we, I just pretty much went over that. Okay, I went over th that it was atonement. Okay. So we're getting close to to our end. Okay. To our 6,000 years. And nobody can calculate it to the year. We're, we can get close. But we, we're going to get close to the season. And we're going to understand. So let's go to Revelation. Let's go back to Revelation or Hazon. Chapter 20. And we're going to look at this. And I'm going to make a statement that is probably going to sound pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We were reading in Revelation chapter 20. Verse 5. Okay, okay. Let's read verse 4 again. And they lived and reigned, I'm going to read the back end of verse 4, with Messiah for a thousand years. And the rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and set apart is he having part of the first resurrection. The second death possesses no authority over these, but they shall be priests of Elohim with Messiah and shall reign with him a thousand years. Okay. So it says, we shall reign. Okay, it says, um, in verse, the top part of verse 4, it says, I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was given to them. Okay? And the lives of those who had been headed because of the witness of Yahushua, and because of the word, did not worship the beast. Okay? So, he's saying here that we're going to rule and reign for 1,000 years. Okay? with the Messiah okay and that's going to be here okay and there's two resurrections okay the first resurrection okay and we were always confused we say we die we go up to heaven we're going to be with him right there in heaven I don't think that's going to happen we're going to go to sleep that's right. and we're going to wake up and we're going to go to sleep and it's going to seem like we just woke up yeah. and it could be 10,000 years but it's going to feel like oh I just woke up Turn to 1 Corinthians. I'll show you where it says it. We're not going to heaven. We're staying here. Yeah. We're staying here. We're not going nowhere. And in the end, the new heaven and new earth are coming here. Okay? And we're going back to the garden. What happened in the garden? He put Adam and Hawa in the garden and it said he walked with them every day. That was perfect. Okay? So we, we, our whole fight from the time that Adam made his mistake, him and Hawa, is to get back to that place where we're with Yahuwah. But we always thought before, oh, we're going to heaven. We're going up there. We're going up there. Well, how did it start? He was down here. He's coming down here. We're not going nowhere. Okay? We're going to go to sleep. Let's look at 1 Corinthians and we'll read it. And it explains it right there. And that's what he just showed me right here in the back. I started hopping up back there and I was like, what? Because I've, I've never seen that before. 1 Corinthians 15. And it's kind of long, but, but we're going we're gonna to read this whole chapter because I want to make sure you understand what it's saying here. It says, But brothers, I make known to you the good news, which I brought as good news to you, which you also did receive, in which you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold fast to that word I brought as good news to you. Otherwise you have believed in vain. Verse 3, For I delivered to you at the first that which I also received, that Messiah died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that He was seen by Kepha, then by the twelve. Okay? 
He had to be seen by people because people wouldn't have believed that he resurrected. Okay, so he had to to show himself because people were already beginning to question because they didn't understand what he was saying. Because remember when the Messiah came, he said, "I'm coming to establish a kingdom," and so they're saying, "He's dead, and he's not the king." Uh, he what's going on, right? But they didn't understand the timing of it. Okay, their timing was off. Their understanding was off. So he he had to reveal himself to to people so they understood that he was resurrected. Verse six. After that, he was seen by over 500 brothers at one time, of whom the greater part remain until now, but some have fallen asleep. Okay. What does that mean? That means they fell asleep. They died, but to them, they're just asleep. And, and, and they're gonna, we're going to wake up like that, and they're not even going to realize, oh man, I took a 500-year uh, nap. You're not even going to know that. You just... It's going to be boom. Okay. Now what we read in Revelation or Hazan, it says, Blessed are those who are part of the first resurrection. What does that mean? Them are the ones that are saved. Okay. The second ones are going to be woken up later to be judged and then sent to hell. Sent to eternal damnation. So that's what he's talking about. The first and second resurrection. Okay. Those first resurrection because those that are in him are going to rule with him for a thousand years. Okay, the rest of them are going to still be taking their dirt nap, right? And then they're going to wake up, and then it's going to be time for them to be judged, and then they're going to be sent to where they need to go. So it says right here they've fallen asleep. Okay. After that, he was seen by Yaakov, then by all the missionaries, and last of all, he was seen by me also, as if to one born prematurely. For I am the least of the missionaries, who am not worthy to be called an missionary because I persecuted the assembly of Elohim. But by the favor of Elohim, I am what I am, and his favor towards me was not in vain, but I labored much more than they, yet not I, but the favor of Elohim with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaimed, and so you believed. And if the Messiah is proclaimed that He has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? And if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Messiah has not been raised. And if Messiah has not been raised, then our proclaiming is empty, and your belief is also empty. And if we are also found false witnesses of Elohim because we have witness we have witness of Elohim that he raised up Messiah whom he did not raise up if then the dead are not raised for if the dead are not raised then neither Messiah has been raised and if Messiah has not been raised your belief is to no purpose and you are still in your sins verse 18 then also those who have fallen asleep in Messiah have perished. Okay, and I'm going to explain to you because it sounds like this guy sounds like he's just like repeating himself and getting all technical and t losing us. Okay, there were some people at that time that believed that there was no resurrection. Now we don't, we don't, we don't, we're not resurrected. Okay, and what he was saying is he said if if we're not resurrected and if the Messiah is not resurrected, then all the things that we're telling you is no good. Okay. So he said, you can't believe part of it. If you don't believe the resurrection, then our whole thing is done. So you're wasting your time. You might as well, if you don't believe in that, then nothing's good. Nothing else counts. Because then he's a liar. Right? He said he was going to resurrect. So you're saying he doesn't. So you're calling him a liar. And if he's a liar, he didn't resurrect, then we don't have to believe him. Okay? So that's what he was arguing with them about. It kind of sounds like confusing, but that's what he was saying. Okay. Uh, let's look at 19. If... In this life only we have expectation in Messiah. We are of all men the most wretched. Verse 20. But now Messiah has been raised from the dead and has become the first fruits of all having fallen asleep. So there it is. That's three times. Okay. For since death is through a man, resurrection of the dead is also through a man. For as all die in Adam, so also 
all shall be made alive in Messiah. And each in his own order. Messiah the first fruit, then those who are of Messiah at his coming. Then those. Then those. Excuse me. Okay, let me read that again. And each in his own order. Messiah the first fruit, then those who are of Messiah at his coming. Then the end, when he delivers up the reign to Elohim the Father. And when he has brought to naught all authority, rule, and power. For he has to reign until he has put all the enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be brought to naught is death. For he has put all under his feet. But when he says all are put under him, it is clear that he who put all under him is expected. Okay. And when all are made subject to him, then the Son himself shall also be subject to him who put all under him in order that Elohim be all in all. Okay? So I'm going to stop there. So it's talking about falling asleep. Okay? Now we would think like we would know, but we won't know. Just in the same way he put Adam to sleep. Same way he put Abraham to sleep. Okay? He knocked them out. They were pretty much like dead. Okay? He put him out. And that's the same way that we're going to go to sleep. And then in, in an instant, okay, then we're going to be awoken, okay? If it's, our, if it's us, if we're the ones, okay, we'll be a part of that first Amen. resurrection, okay? And some of us that will be alive, I'm trying to find it right now, but I, I lost my place about the other scripture I had. I think it was in Second Corinthians. I'm going to use my phone here. I'm not texting nobody. I'm just looking at my... I think I have it here on my phone. If you see me back there on my phone, I'm not playing with it. I'm just looking up some scripture, so I don't think I'm in the middle of service texting anybody or anything like that. Uh, okay, 5 8. Okay, so here's where we were wrong a lot. Okay. It says in verse, uh, let's go to Corinthians, Second Corinthians, chapter five. Verse one. It says, For we know that if the tent of our earthly house is destroyed, which is our body, right? We're all wearing down, getting old, our knees hurt in the morning when it's cold or whatever, back, whatever it is. So so we know that our body's wearing down. This body's not gonna be forever. Okay? We have a building from Elohim, a house not made with hands, everlasting in the heavens. Okay? Now that's where we were wrong. Because we say, Oh, we've got a building in the heavens for us, right? Yes, it is there for us. But remember in the end, it says there will be a new heaven and a new earth coming. So that's coming here. That doesn't mean we're going there. It's coming here to us. Okay? He just said, remember the Messiah said, I go and prepare a place for you. He's, he's there preparing a place. But that place isn't going to stay there. That place is coming back here. If you look at the end in Revelation, it talks about the, the new heaven and the new earth descending. Okay? So it's being prepared there, but it's coming here. And we always thought, oh, we're going up there. Okay? For indeed, in this we groan, longing to put on our dwelling, which is from heaven. Okay? So that, having put it on, we shall not be found naked. For indeed, we who are in this tent groan. All right? We all know that. Okay? We groan. Body hurts, aches, ready to get out of here, ready to see the next portion of whatever he has for me. Okay? It says, while we groan, being burdened, not because we desire to put it off, but to put on the other. Okay? So it's not we're groaning because we want to die, we don't want to live no more. It's we're groaning because we want to have our eternal body. Okay? We want to have... That, that relationship. We want to be with Him again. Okay? 
to put off, it says, but to put on the other, so that so that what is to die might be swallowed up by life. Okay? This physical body is going to die. So he's saying our desire is is that the life of our of our new body would eat up the death of our old body. Okay, that's that's what we really want. We want to live forever, is pretty much what he's saying. Verse five. Now he who has prepared us for this same purpose is Elohim, who has given us the spirit as a pledge of what is to come. Okay? So the spirit's like like a little down payment. Okay? Or it's like a little we get a little a little piece, a little taste of what the fullness will be. Okay? Verse 6. Therefore, being always of good courage and knowing that while we were at home in the body, we are absent from the Master. Okay? For if we walk by belief, for we walk by belief, not by sight. Okay? We are of good courage and are well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Master. Okay? Now we've always understood that the wrong way. At least I did. You say, oh, it means absent to be the body to be present with the Father. So we die and then we automatically go up there with Him. Right? That's what I thought. But what He's saying here, He's saying while we're in this flesh suit, okay, while we're here on earth, we get a portion, we have the Spirit. Okay? But we don't have the fullness of dwelling and living with Him like Adam did in the garden yet. Okay? So it says, when that time comes, when we become absent of this body, and when that time comes when we're resurrected with our new body, then we will be Him, with Him all the time. Okay? Because right now we have like the Spirit, which you say is like, like a portion of it. It's a, it's a down payment. It's to help us get there. Okay? It says, So we also make it our aim to be well pleasing to Him, whether being at home or being away from Him. For we all have to appear before the judgment seat of Messiah in order to receive according to what He has done in the body, whether good or evil. Knowing therefore the fear of Elohim, we persuade men, but we have been made manifest to Elohim. And I also trust in your consciences that you have been manifested. Okay? So he's talking about the fact that we all have to stand before to be judged. Okay? Now, now there, there's, there's two. There's the first one, which we're cool. If we catch it, we get the first resurrection. Okay, we're good. Okay? But, but the second resurrection, it says we're going to go and we're going to have to stand before him and give account for our lives based on what we've done or haven't done. Okay? Let's turn to, to bear sheets. Let's go back to Genesis. Because we want to see. I think it's... And when you translate the word garden, it means paradise. Okay? It was a place of, of protection. Okay, now in, in chapter 3 and verse 8. Okay. If he would have did, Adam would have did what he was told to do and he would follow the instructions, everything would have been fine. Okay? He would have been fine. But here's the fact that I want to look at what makes me believe, okay, one of the things why we're going to be here with Him. Okay? Because it says in chapter 3, verse 8. Now this is when He had already created creation. He created man. He created woman. He created the earth. Okay? Now this was right after they had sinned. Okay? In verse 8. It says, And they heard the voice of Yahuwah Elohim walking about in the garden. Okay? He wasn't in heaven. He was walking about in the garden where he placed man. Okay? That was perfect. Okay? That was perfect. 
there was, but until he made that mistake, everything was perfect. Okay? So, by this saying here, that he was walking in the garden, which we all know was here on earth, right? That was saying that he was with him here on earth. He dwelt with him here on earth. It says, in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahuwah amongst the trees of the garden. Okay, Why did they hide themselves? Because they were ashamed. Okay, they were ashamed. So, it's the same way. We're going to go back to that same thing. Okay, He's going to dwell with us here. Okay, If we're able to keep His commands. Okay, It would have been fine if He was able to keep the command. But he didn't. Okay? He didn't so that he had to make another way for us to be restored back unto him. Okay? Turn to Bereshith chapter 6. Now that we kind of understand that, we see how, how important, see with that we see how important the Sabbath is. Okay? If we've been keeping the Sabbath forever, we would understand. Okay, oh, 6,000 years? Oh, yeah, 1,000 years, no problem. 6,000, six, like six days of work, seven day rest, oh, we're resting Him. Oh, everything makes sense now, right? But before, when we didn't, we were like, what does that mean? What does that mean? What's that for? Or how does that work, right? One of the other things that is said that I just remembered right now in 25, let's go back to 25 real quick, I'm sorry. Leviticus 25. Now remember, everything's a picture, okay? Everything is a picture. All the stories. What are they telling us? It's a story. Every story. Every everything they do. It, it's talking about the Messiah. It's talking about salvation. It's talking about being restored to the Father. Okay? So remember it says, we were talking about Yobel, which we used to call Jubilee. And let's look at 25 verse 10. It says, And you shall set the 50th year apart, and proclaim release through all the land to the inhabitants. It is Yobel for you. Listen to this. And each of you shall return to his possession. And each shall return to his own clan. Okay? Now let's take that. Okay? Let's take that to the end. What does he say? I'm going to prepare a place for you. Oh... That means we're going to return to our possession, what He's built for us. We're going to return to Him, right? We're going to be with Him where we came from again. So this is a picture of that same thing. See, we're reading this story and we're thinking, oh, it's just uh, 2,000 years ago. That's old. We don't even have sheep and goats like that no more. Right? Well, I do, but most people don't. So, right? that's all crazy. That's all weird. Right? But what He's saying here, He says, at this, this Yobel... Okay, at the end of this 50 years, and so at the end of the cycle of 120 50s, okay, it says then we're going to go back to our clan, which is Him. We're going to go back to Him. We're going to go back and we're going to possess that which is ours. Okay, what He has for us. Okay, and we're going to dwell with Him forever. Okay, and that's a good thing. Let's go back to Bereshith 6. Now, we've been taught, see, and there's some things, and they're good, but we don't, a lot of times I don't think we understand the fact of that Yahuwah gives us promises and makes promises, okay, and, th and them things are, n it's not because of something we did, He just throws them out there, but sometimes we have to activate them. By doing something. Okay? And I'll give you an example. In, uh, in uh, Bereshith, chapter 6, verse 13. This was Noah. Okay? And Elohim looked upon the earth and saw that it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And Elohim said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. 
and see I am going to destroy them from the earth. Okay? So here's what he comes out and says, pretty much just make it simple. Look, I'm killing everybody. Okay? I'm killing everybody, but I'm gonna let you live. Okay? But here's what he says. Verse fourteen. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Okay? He had to do something. Okay? A lot of times we don't do things. We just say, Oh, Father, uh, you said uh, if I believe in you, and I believe, so go ahead and do it. Uh, go ahead and do it. Just do whatever you said. Yep, save me. Uh, yep, I, I don't have to do nothing because you can do all things. Just do it. Right? It doesn't work that way. Okay? He gives him and he tells him, Look it, I'm destroying everything. I'm going to preserve you. Okay? But here's what you got to do in order to be preserved. If he didn't build the ark, he dies. Okay, if he don't follow the instruction of Yahuwah, he dies. Flat out. If we don't follow his instruction the same way, we die. Okay? We only, we can't say, I have faith, I, I just believe, I love him. Well, the only way you show that you believe is by what you do. You know what I'm saying? You can't say, I believe, I believe, I believe. But if you're not doing, then you really don't believe. Okay? There has to be an action. So, so he tells him, I'm going to destroy this place. And he says, you need to build the ark to save yourself. Okay? Now, imagine this. And I'm going to move on real quick because we shared this on Wednesday. But imagine this. He's asked to do something that nobody's ever done before. Okay? Right? And, and the whole rest of the world is looking at him, making fun of him. Okay? And he lived for, what, 600 years before the flood came? Who knows how many... Hundreds of years, it might have been a hundred, but even if it was 75 years. Imagine for 75 years being tortured, right, about building a boat when there's no, it never rained before. He's over there telling people, uh, there's going to be water coming down from the sky. They're like, ah, you stupid, it never happened before. What's wrong with you, weirdo? Right? Probably made fun of him, made fun of his family, made fun of his children for years, not just two verses, two seconds. It takes us two seconds to get from one verse to the next. He built the ark, yay, he saved. End of the story. Right? How many years did he have to go through the torture, right? And have to get up and say, Man, right? Our faith is tested all the time. Man, did I really hear right? Is that really the Father? Or am I just, man, nobody else is doing it. Am I wrong? Right? He woke up like that some days. Man, am I do man, am I doing too much? Man, nobody else is is, is keeping the Sabbath or nobody else is is doing the feet. Man, maybe 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 uh, maybe we're doing too much. Maybe maybe I'm wrong, right? Well, he look at here. It's not always in what everybody's doing. Okay, it's not always popular. What does it say? Narrow is the way. The, to, the narrow. Is, that means if it's narrow, that means he don't have to make it big because not many people are going to make it. All right. Unfortunately, because everybody is concerned with what everybody thinks of them or what everybody else is doing. Okay. So he he promises him some he makes a covenant with him but he says you know what here's what you got to do he said you got to build an ark you got to get these animals and you got to get the food for you and your family and these animals okay let's turn to uh, Bereshith I have two more sets of verses and we'll be finished it's kind of almost like a split in two messages but really not because I mean it's good to know when things are going to happen but if we don't if we don't make it, it does no good, right? Oh, I know it's supposed to be six thousand years, and then then after six thousand, then we're gonna have, uh, you know, you know, you can know all the whole details of the story, right? But if you're not in the right place, you, you're gonna be, oh man, I knew it and I missed it. Uh, right? I'm separated from him forever. Okay. I knew it. I knew what I was supposed to do. Man, I heard it. Man, it made sense. Everything was going together. It was like a puzzle. And I just didn't do it because, man, everybody else wasn't doing it around me. Right. Man. So close. Okay. Everything's for a reason. Okay. So it said at the end of that, which I, I'm, it says in verse 22, and don't, don't go there, just listen. This was about Noah before we go to Abraham. It says, And Noah did according to all that Yahuwah had commanded him. That's why he lived. Because he did as he commanded him to do. Okay, Let's look at Abraham. Everybody knows about Abraham. Father Abraham. You know, we sing about him. He, all kinds of things, right? Yeah, Abraham. Right? Good guy. 
Now, let's check out what Yahuwah, the promise Yahuwah, the covenant He makes with Him. Chapter 12 of Bereshit, verse 1, or Genesis. It says, And Yahuwah said to Abram, Go yourself out of the land from your relatives and from your father's house to a land which I show you. Verse 2. And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I shall bless those who bless you, and curse him who curses you. And in you all the clans of the earth shall be blessed. Yes! Man! Wonderful, right? We read them two verses. This is the first, the second two, not the first one. We read over the first one fast, but the second two. Bless everything I touch. Bless everywhere I go. You're going to make me a great nest. Everybody who says something against me is being cursed. Yes! That's good for us, right? But what does he say in verse 1? How did he have to activate that covenant? He had to leave his family. Wow! Now it's not as easy as it was before. Imagine that. You have to leave your family. You have to leave everything you're used to. Maybe you, you have a position. Maybe you have authority. Maybe you've built up. Maybe you have uh, 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 a good name and people look out for you and you don't have, never have to buy uh, milk because one of your friends who uh, owns a dairy has milk and he gives you meat and your other friend does this and, and your life is set. My life is... Man, I'm, I don't want to move. Okay? My sister just had another baby or, 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 or my, my child just had a grandchild and it's just born and it's two, two years old. Right? Or whatever. And they don't want to go with me. They, they, they moved in. They're, they're still in the city but they're not a part of my clan and, and I'm telling them that, that if they want that I have to go and I have to take my people with me but they want to stay here. So what do I do? Man, are here or... Right? So now it's not so easy, okay? But we read over so fast. We want to just see the blessing, the blessing, the blessing. But we don't have to see that it takes some things we have to do. Obedience, that's a sacrifice, okay? He has to leave everything that he's comfortable with and go and live in a place where there's all kinds of people he don't know and he's heard stories about them, how wild, savage killers they are, right? And he's got to go and try to find a place to... You know, live in a tent which probably had something more permanent okay be away from everything he's used to and everything he knows in order to be blessed okay but he was able to do that okay he probably struggled okay but he was able to make the right choice that doesn't mean we're not going to struggle with it you're not going to wrestle with it but in the end are you going to do what he tells you to do okay, that's the important thing sometimes he tells me things and I wrestle I'm like oh I don't want man I don't... that's stupid alright and then I have to say I'm sorry it's not, right? But but I don't try to, I don't try to pretend like. I already know he knows what I'm thinking, so even if I say it, he already knows, right? And I'll be honest, and I'm just venting to him. I'm like, ah, this is, this is right, <laughs> craziness. It's just too much, you know. It's just what I don't understand, right? Well, why? Right? And I'm finally after I get all my little huffs and puffs out. Then I'll be cool for a while, and then it'll start speaking to me. And then I'll say, Okay, I see. I understand. I understand what you're doing. I understand. Okay? So these men, Noah, by his faithfulness, he saved all mankind. Okay? Now he had to do something that wasn't popular, that everybody wasn't doing. Okay? But if he wouldn't have did that, he wouldn't have saved us all. Same thing with Abraham. Abraham could have said, you know what, that's cool, but I'm just going to stay right here. I'm, I'm okay. Okay, I'm still going to read my little word and, and do my little thing and worship you, but I'm, I'm not going to go and do all that. Okay, that's too much for me. Okay? But he did. Okay? Let's turn to Bereshith. Chapter 18. In verse 17. Now because of his obedience, okay, Yahuwah would reveal things to Abraham before he did them. Okay? Not everything, 
because it's not important to know everything. Okay, sometimes we want to know everything. Okay, but he has to build our faith. What does that mean? That means he's got to he's got to allow you to trust him. Okay, I, I shared uh, the story I made up with the youth the other day about faith. Okay, this is what faith is not. Okay, let's say I woke up in the morning. And Yahuwah just told me my whole day already. Okay? This is what's going to happen. You're going to go to the grocery store. Right when you go to the grocery store, someone's going to cuss you out. Okay? Right when you get to walk in the door. And I don't want you to say anything to you. Because when you come out the door, they're going to give you $100. So just when you go there, you just take the cussing and don't say nothing. Go inside, get your milk. When you come back out, they're going to say sorry. And they're going to give you 100 bucks, And everything's going to be good. Okay? Now, if I knew all that, I'd be like, oh, I could do that. Right? Because I already know what's going to happen. Okay? But building faith and trusting Him is He's saying, I'm not going to show you every single step. But you're just going to have to trust me. Right? That I'm doing something even if you don't understand what I'm doing. Right? Because the first thing I used to cry after the first part we started learning about this, the first thing I used to cry is, I'm doing everything I can to serve you and why you let this happen to me? <laughs> he said, you laid down your life. What is that supposed to mean? says you gave me your life so I'm going to use your life to bring people to me if you got to go through a little bit of hardship so other people can see how you're supposed to react to that then so be it All right? didn't you say you gave me your life yeah but I don't know you were talking about that All right? I don't know you meant all that stuff okay so here's he began to reveal things to Abraham that was necessary for Abraham to know okay he didn't tell him everything because it wasn't necessary for him to know everything okay but certain things he would reveal to him okay because of the fact of, of his relationship with him. Let's look at verse 17. And Yahuwah said, I, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? Since Abraham is certainly going to become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I have known him, so that he commands his children and his household after him, to guard the way of Yahuwah, to do righteousness and right ruling. So that Yahuwah brings to Abraham what he has spoken to him. Okay. So he said he will be blessed, his seed will be blessed. But also he's saying he's given him commands to follow for other generations after him. Okay. Now, we've fallen away from the commandments, right? From the instruction of Yahuwah. So look at what's happened to our generations, right? You can take it back a hundred years ago to things that are happening now. I mean, me and my wife seen it the other day. We seen two. She was like, she almost, she was like, man, I feel like crying. We were uh, in Hammett and we were at a stoplight and we seen two girls that couldn't even be 17 years old pushing babies across the street. Like two of them. I was, I was like, wow, this is crazy. Well, what happened? We got away from the standard and the rule, okay, of how things are supposed to be. Okay, and that's what we're supposed to get back to. Okay, the right ruling. That's what we're learning. Keeping the Sabbath. It's important to keep the Sabbath, okay? It's important to keep the Sabbath. And, and when, he, when He deals with them, right? He says, Abraham, that's for you and anybody in your house. Okay? If they're not, then you, they got to be out of your house. Okay? He's saying, this is the instruction. You're, this your house. Okay? These are what I, the rules I want you to keep. And anybody that's going to uh, live in your house or even work for your house, they're going to honor and respect that instruction. Okay? Why? Because they need to learn. If you don't make people honor and respect that, then they're never going to learn. You're not giving them a chance. Okay? You're gonna, what they're going to have is basically... Um, uh, they're going to be like almost cursed in a sense. Because they don't have no understanding, okay? They don't have no understanding, you know, and, and they say, well, you say it's just uh, just me, I live by myself, or it's just uh, whoever, it's just me and my wife, or we live by ourselves, but that doesn't matter. And people you deal with every day, okay? Uh, when we're getting the roof done, the guy said, I'm going to come do it. So you can't work on my property on that day, sorry. I said, we keep the sap. Oh, man, you're not. No, we try to explain to him, oh, well, well, you know. And I explained to him, I explained, and then after a while he was like, he kind of didn't know what to say. He's like, yeah, I, I, I try to do, you know, what I could do, you know. 
So in other words, it's like, oh, I'm backing off here, okay? Somebody calls me on the phone, right? Or, you know, uh, business with somebody. I mean, I mean, if I opened a business, I would be closed. You know, and people would come to me, you're crazy, right? How do you make it? You're closed on the best days, right? You're closed on Friday night and all day Saturday. That's when people just get to finish cashing their checks, right? They have all the money, and you're not going to be open that day, right? I'm not supposed to honor the Sabbath. Okay, I'm teaching them whether they live in my household or not. Okay, Amen. but it's important because it's not that you're you're pushing a bunch of rules on somebody. Okay, you're helping them. You're giving them the chance that they need. It says in the Word, it says we are to train up children in the way they should go, according to Him. Okay, not according to the way we think. Okay, and sometimes Grandma, and Grandpa. All right, great grandma and great grandpa, they're good, but sometimes they might be wrong on a couple of things, and it is what it is, right? Doesn't mean just because they're family, it has to line up to this. Okay, I've ran into people and say, "Oh yeah, I believe in the word, but we believe like this," and like, "Oh, you're in trouble." Okay, you you gonna make up your own thing? Okay, if it lines up to this, it's cool. Okay, but if not, then it's not it's not in any way disrespectful to the person but it's just if you're wrong you're wrong okay if i'm wrong i'm wrong okay so it's our job yep. to raise people up okay yep. it's our job to practice and like i said you don't have to force somebody but by the things you do by the way you do it okay uh i shared with the, the youth yesterday because when we started learning about it and little by little okay i told him i said we're going to start eating early now because we're not supposed to buy stuff or do any transactions once the sun goes down on Friday night. Okay, so we're going to change that. We're going to do something early. I said uh, we we took the 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 sticks away from the pool table. Okay, because we're not supposed to. And, and that was hard for me. I'm thinking that's like drastic, over the overboard, over the edge, crazy, right? Can't play a game of pool, right? That's what I was thinking. But I said, look at the world. Overboard, over the edge, crazy. Look at how people are dressing with demonic symbols and drinking blood and naked and doing all kinds of things on MTV. He said, that's not drastic? That's not over the edge? And he says, how am I going to beat that? How are you going to have victory over that if you're going to do a little halfway, a little 20 minute, a little one hour and a couple songs and you're going to expect to be able to overcome that? He's like, it has to be that way. Because of the times we live in. Okay, it has to be that way. So I was like, wow. And I began to understand. So as we begin to practice, then we begin to understand. As we begin to practice a feast, now things make more sense. Oh, wow, I understand. That's why that was. That's why that happened. Right? See, it was a trick. See, the Passover, we're supposed to keep Passah. Okay, what did they do? They threw Easter right next to it, real close. Okay, very close on purpose. Just to get us off here just a little bit. Okay? Now, how does Easter relate to the Scripture at all? Not really, in no way. All right? Well, how do you relate a bunny and hiding eggs to this? All right? So, you've pretty much taken something that was set apart and you've incorporated to where if you ask people, I guarantee you went to school and says, okay, you might get a handful, but the majority, you'll say, what does Easter mean to you? Easter baskets and getting eggs. All right? <laughs> Yeah. With stuff like that. Yeah. The presents, the eggs. Yeah. So so that they don't have no spiritual understanding of the purpose. They have no understanding what the meaning is. They have no understanding what the season's about. Okay? So then they're totally lost. Okay? They don't understand that that the Messiah died for us. They don't understand that that it's pointing to something in the future. They don't understand none of that stuff. Okay? But as hard as it is, it's our responsibility to restore that. Amen. Okay? You don't have to force nobody to do nothing, but you just say, "Oh, I, I don't. We don't celebrate that. It's not according to the word. I keep the word." All right? I ran to a couple people, and I'm like, uh, "They're like, why are you doing that?" I said, "Oh, I, I read the word. It's in the word," and they don't know what to say to me. They're just like, "Oh, okay." I said, "Yeah, it's it's in there. All right, we do what's in there because right? there's no argument. It's not like I'm making something up. Right? If it's in the word, it's in the word. Okay? He's asked us to do it for a reason." But it's our job, and like I said, it's going to be a little bit harder for us. Okay, my son's going to have it a little easier. 
the next generation, the generation of youth that come to youth group, they're going to have it easier. Okay? Because they're already going to know ahead of time. But us, the older generation, it was harder for us. Okay? It's going to be harder for us to let things go. Okay? It's going to be harder for us to change things. You know? And we can celebrate the feast and then we're just going to have to have, learn how to have just some, just because fellowships. You know what I mean? Amen. Uh, on accomplishments. I love it. You know what I mean? Uh, we're not going to celebrate. We're not to celebrate birthday. I'm not going to celebrate my son's birthday, but I'm going to celebrate uh, when when he starts walking. Okay, and I'm going to have a party. I'm going to celebrate when he goes to school. I'm going to have a celebration every year when he completes school, because then that's a purpose for it, Amen. right? Oh, you made it to second grade. We're going to have a party for you because we're we're happy. It's an accomplishment, not just oh you're going to have it and you didn't do nothing for it, but it's just because it's supposed to be your day. You get all kinds of stuff no matter what. <laughs> So there's a reason for an accomplishment. You know, somebody accomplishes something. You know, there's so many things, right? And we can stay away from all of them things that have no value to us spiritually. Also, actually have negative value for us, okay? Because it takes us further and further away, okay? So, it's hard. It's going to be hard. It isn't going to be easy. But it wasn't easy for them. Easy, either, it wasn't easy for them. See, it sounds easy because we can read through a chapter in about 20 minutes. Okay? So we think, oh, wow. Yes, they went to jail, but uh, three verses later, about five minutes took me to read. They were out. Yay! All right? They were in jail for a long time. Okay? It wasn't just a couple hours. Them jails were a lot different than back then. Okay? It says they got stoned. Okay? They got beat up with, uh, with rocks. They got beaten and whipped. Okay? And then a couple verses later, it talks about them sailing here and they met some friends, right? But they didn't tell you how long they're walking around with a sore back, right? Out there in the dust, okay, with open wounds and and sand getting in there, you know what I mean? And and having to go through all that pain, okay? And we've always looked at it from that side. We've looked at it from the good side of things, okay? Because in the society we live in today, we don't want nothing hard, okay? We want everything easy. It's just as fast as I can, Uh, Internet school, quick, make it quick, fast, give me a degree, let me just buy it on the internet then, forget it, and just pay the money so I can just do it, right? So, but some things take time, some things take work, okay? So that's what he's asking us here, okay? It's important for us to be obedient to the instructions, okay, that we can help the generation after us, okay? You can truly help them, more so than setting them up with a house or all kinds of other things, because they can lose that in an instant. Look, <laughs> it happens all the time. Okay, so let's stand up. Hopefully, I helped you out a little bit there about some things. We're able to see. It's close. It's close. He said it's going to be a thief in the night. Okay, what's the difference between a thief and a robber? A robber's going to jam a gun in your face. A thief's going to come in and leave, and you ain't even know he came. You're going to wake up next morning and be like, Hey, what happened to my necklace? Where'd it go? That's how fast it's going to come. Okay? People have this image, which I did the same way, as that, I'm going to see him coming in the sky and I'm going to say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Right? (laughs) It ain't going down like that. Okay? It it ain't going down like that. It's It's like a judge. Okay? When a judge sends you and he goes, Bang! Once the bang is done, there ain't no more arguing about it. Hey, but hold on a second, I forgot. No, done deal. It's over. Okay? When that, when it's time, when he's returning already, it's too late. It's too late. Okay? It's our, your, your chance, you've already had your opportunity of window. It's too late. It, now it's judgment time. Okay? So, I mean, I, I was totally, that's how I was when I was in the world. I said, man, I, I read enough. I, I kind of see a couple things. Yeah. If I see this, then I'll start getting ready. You know what I mean? I think, oh yeah, he says he's going to appear in the clouds, so everyone's going to see him. So when I see him, I'll just say, sorry, hey, what about me? You know what I mean? Hook me up. All right? It's not going to be that way. But we have hope in him. Okay? We have peace in him. We still enjoy life. Okay? I read a lot of things, and sometimes, you know what I mean? Sometimes I get so excited, I think like, oh wow, you know what I mean? then there's still life. You still enjoy life, okay? 
we still do things and still have fun. I remember one time I was reading some things and it was so much and it was so deep and I could see some things that I shared, like Bob shared me or maybe Jerome, but like I won't share with certain people certain things because it's it almost like if you look at everything, if you don't have a right mindset, it can make you depressed, you know, because you're like, man, everything's just falling apart. And I remember one time I was doing that, I was reading, I was like, oh, you won't believe this. And I walk around my house and I'm like, this is crazy. This is crazy. This is unbelievable. I'm reading, I'm like, no way. I'm like, we, if, like we're doomed. It feels like, you know what I mean? Not we're doomed, but it's just that close, you know? And then I was telling Tiana and then she was looking at me and she goes, we need some eggs. And I went, oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because it just put me into like reality. Okay, yes, yes, yes. All this stuff's happening, but yes, okay. But you can still enjoy your life, okay? You can still enjoy life, okay? There's still, you don't have to, you don't have to be like totally in the clouds where you walk through every day dreadful and you're like, oh, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. You know what I mean? You know it's coming. When the opportunity comes, he has you speak to somebody, you speak to them, okay? When it comes, to, but you, you go through your life, you live life, you enjoy life, okay? You're, you're spiritually ready, you know, you don't have to have all your stuff packed up in a bag and, you know, you're not going nowhere and enjoy life still at the same time, but still be prepared spiritually, hallelujah. Hallelujah. around the feast and the days of rest that's powerful so let's pray father we thank you for this day we thank you for the understanding that you're beginning to bring how important it is to survive not only on the, on the weekly basis on the yearly basis but also in the full picture of things and at the end of six thousand years that we'll come to that place where we have that thousand years of millennial rest with you that we'll rule and reign with you Father, we thank you. We thank you for the understanding. We thank you for the understanding about the resurrections, the things that we didn't understand before. We thank you for the understanding that everything is going to be the way it was before. We'll be here with you in a new heaven and a new earth. And you'll walk with us just like you walked with Adam and our walk. Father, we ask that you would release your peace in the atmosphere of this room. Thank you for the gift of faith that will go forth. Father, we ask that you give us boldness and trust in you, that we would not be pressured or persecuted or be cowardly to what everybody else is not doing. We will be able to do what you've asked us to do. And that's the best thing we can do for ourselves, for our children, for the generations to come. Thank you, we honor you. We honor you. Hallelujah. If you need prayer, you can come up. If not, you are dismissed. We do have some food back there. We're getting better. Turn it off.